Brocam here. In my last video, when I was free band modding my Yaesu VX7R, uh, I mentioned that I didn't have a programming cable and it is just really tedious just to enter all these frequencies and all these repeaters. And I just think that uh, I'm gonna try and build my own programming cable. Rather than spend the 20 bucks on it, uh, I'm gonna spend, uh, I don't know, a, an hour or two trying to uh, get this old uh, extra Baofeng programming cable I have working and seeing if we can get the data to download and upload to this. So let's jump on over to the workbench. So if you saw my last video where I Mars modded this, I mentioned I didn't have a programming cable, but I do have this cable, which takes it from the 2.5 millimeter four pole jack uh, TRS connector and splits it out to a three and a half millimeter jack and a two and a half millimeter jack. And I was looking at the pinout and it looks like really the only things that are used are the ground and uh, this second from the bottom sleeve. And it looks like what they do is that the ring will either be only transmit or only write and only or only read. So I had the idea that since I've got an extra Kenwood cable here, uh, or Baofeng cable, I guess. Um, I was gonna try to uh, hook a wire up to ground and you know all the connections in here, and then uh, I'll just hook them up to where I need here. So that these are handy little adapters for just for quick experimenting. So let's go ahead and desolder this and try to put some new wire onto it. So I've already cracked this open once and all I did was I took a pair of a uh, needle nose and I just kind of squeezed it a bit until you heard a little pop. Not super hard, just enough to hear a pop. Eventually this clamshell will come open and I got in here and I noticed that it's it's just three wires and they're all they're labeled and everything. And there's even a a bodge wire here for ground to ground. Uh, but I'm going to desolder these, and then I've got some three conductor wire that I'm going to attach, and we will then attach to our two and a half millimeter jack. <clears throat> so now I've got an extra one of these I can hold on to until I need it later if I want to put this back together the original way. So I've got some of this nice three conductor uh, wire. Uh, I'm really happy with this stuff. I'm going to put a link to it in the description down below. I'm just going to take a small length of about, I don't know, uh, six inches, eight inches, whatever it is. It has really nice thick insulation on it. Oh, I forgot. This is also shielded cable, so it's got shield on it as well. So yeah, it's got, it's not only is it shielded, it's got some of that braiding and it also has some uh, fiber in here for uh, cord strength. Go ahead, get our board loaded up here. Uh, ground, transmit, receive. And then VCC, but we don't need that for this. Now it's not the prettiest, but I reckon that'll do. And now I'm gonna give myself a big lead here. Let's 
just go back about two inches. Because I'm going to actually add a switch here. Alright, so let's connect to this new cable. Okay, so I'm going to have to double up. My plan for this switch, three position switch, uh, links in the description for this one, but it's just a basic three position, three position switch. Uh, I'm going to put the two wires on the outer pins, and then I'm going to put the another lead to this middle one to go to this. So let's tend these wires. All right, so now I need to figure out which one of these is the second from the bottom. All right, it's R. So here we go. Here is my janky cable. Let's see if it works. Alright, I did some testing and it wasn't working. But I got it working. Uh, I took the switch out of the equation. I was skeptical that this bit was going to work at all. Just from my limited knowledge and how serial connections work, I was how is there going to be a handshake? So I did find this schematic from some random Weebly site and uh, it just said to put a uh, diode. Uh, so let me orient it the same way that it is kind of in this schematic that I'll bring up later and talk about. Uh, so this is the uh, TX side, this is the RX side. It just said to put a diode and then connect to that second uh, from the bottom uh, contact and uh, I've, I've tried this once already and I've read and written to the device so let's jump over to the computer and we'll we'll see that in action okay so now we're gonna go to radio download from radio and I'm sitting a little awkward hopefully I'm splicing this footage in but I've got the camera right here between my lap so I can shoot the camera or the, the radio rather so we've got our uh, serial connection selected. We've got Yesu and our VX7. We click OK. Turn the radio off. It's off. Connect the cable. It's connected. Press and hold Mon F and the power button at the same time. It will turn on and it will say clone. And then uh, what we do is we click OK and then we will hit the band button and that will download the stuff to chirp. As we can see, it is downloading. And so I'm not holding any buttons, I'm just holding the radio up because I'm trying to have you see it. And there we go, there is our, uh, There's our radio image. So let's go ahead and do a read. So let's turn the radio off and let's change something. Let's add a name to this one. This is the adventure frequency. So we'll say, I don't know how many characters I have. Adventure. Can I do that? Let's try that. Let's try doing adventure. Okay. So almost. Let's do radio and upload to radio. Same settings. Hold Mon F and the power button. Radio turns on. Now we're on clone. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hit VM on this first before we hit OK and chirp. We hit VM and it says clone wait. We click OK and chirp and it starts writing to the radio. You can see this has changed to clone RX. I know the glare on this is bad. The 
hard to hard to set this one up. So uh, right into the radio and should be done here in just a minute. There we have it. Our radio reboots. Let me unplug the cable. And scroll back right there. And now we can see that this channel says adventure. So here's the schematic I found and, uh, we can ignore most of this. So basically, uh, this is that entire, let me make this brush size a bit smaller. This is the entire like FTDI chip side. So the entire Baofeng plug, like the USB part. So we don't care about any of this. This is already handled for us. All we care about, I take that back. All we care about is those two spots right there. So let's uh, scooch on over because all we care about is that. So if we look here, we've got our one pin, well, we've got, we've got our ground. We've got that handled. Um, then we have our one pin going to the radio. And then this comes up here and says, okay, one pin, that's going to go to RX. And that's just unimpeded. There's nothing there. Then, uh, we're going to have another one going to TX, but there is a diode there. So we need a, uh, one in four, one, four, eight diode. Uh, personally, I don't think that this is, if I was mass producing these, then I would pay more attention to, to this. Um, I just grabbed a diode from my Arduino kit. My, like, I got like a, a basic starter Arduino kit that I've had for like 10 years and it's, I still have all the little electronic components. So I just grabbed one of those and that is what I soldered together. So, uh, there's also a, uh, pull up, uh, a pull up resistor. I just kind of said, fuck it. And, uh, said like, we'll see if it works without it. It works without it. Um, so if there's ever any issues with it, then I know that that's, that might be, that might be the issue. So in the description, I've got Amazon affiliate links to the Baofeng programming cable, the conductors that are, the conductor wire, uh, I have a diode kit. I've not personally used that diode kit, but, uh, as I said before, when we're going over the schematics, I just picked a diode that I had and, uh, it, it worked. So. Uh, I also got the CT91 adapter in there. If, uh, if you need that, that's kind of, it makes it easier to, uh, to plug these in. Cause it just kind of, it gives a little, uh, extension. So you're not trying to jam it in down here. You kind of have, you know, reaches up here. It's a little nice, a little bit nicer. Um, there's, there's an affiliate link for a, a, a VX six. If you want to, I think they're, they're, uh, this is a VX seven. I love mine, but I've heard amazing things about the VX six. Uh, I think it's a little bit more popular just because I think they, they might still be making it. Uh, and there's also, if you don't want to do all this, affiliate link to the VX programming cable. It's like, I think it's like 20 bucks. Uh, only reason I did this is because, uh, yeah, it's 1859. Only reason I did this is because uh, I wanted to do it. It's amateur hour. So uh, I'm just surprised I got it to work. That's awesome. I would not go out and buy a Baofeng programming cable and the conductors and the wires and all this stuff just to try to make your own programming cable. The only reason I did it is because I had all this stuff on hand, but if you need one or two of these things, that, that might be worth it for you then. So that's all the time I have for today. Thanks very much for watching Amateur Hour and remember why buy it when you can build it. Probably because this looks like it could start a fire if you're not paying attention. 73.